The Slavic native faith, also known as Rodnovery, is a modern pagan religion. Classified as a new religious movement, its practitioners harken back to the historical belief systems of the Slavic peoples of Central and Eastern Europe. Rodnovery is a widely accepted self descriptor within the community, although there are Rodnover organizations which further characterize the religion as orthodoxy, old belief, and Vedism. Rodnovers typically regard their religion as a faithful continuation of ancient beliefs that survived as folk religion or as conscious, double belief following the Christianization of the Slavs in the Middle Ages. Rodnovery draws upon surviving historical and archaeological sources, folk religion and even non-Slavic sources such as Hinduism. Rodnover theology and cosmology may be described as pantheism and polytheism—worship of the supreme god of the universe and of the multiple gods, ancestors and spirits of nature identified through Slavic culture. Adherents usually meet together in groups to conduct religious ceremonies. These typically entail the invocation of gods, sacrifices and the pouring of libations, dances and a communal meal. Rodnover ethical thinking emphasizes the good of the collective over the rights of the individual. The religion is patriarchal, and attitudes towards sex and gender are generally conservative. Rodnovery has developed distinctive strains of political and identitary philosophy. Rodnover organizations often characterize themselves as ethnic religions, emphasizing that the religion is bound to Slavic ethnicity. This often manifests as ethnic nationalism, opposition to miscegenation and the belief in the fundamental difference of racial groups. Rodnovers often glorify Slavic history, criticizing the impact of Christianity in Slavic countries and arguing that these nations will play a central place in the world's future. Rodnovers share a strong feeling that their religion represents a paradigmatic shift which will overcome Western thought and what they call mono-ideologies. The contemporary organized Rodnovery movement arose from a multiplicity of sources and charismatic leaders just at the brink of the collapse of the Soviet Union and spread rapidly by the mid-1990s and the 2000s. Antecedents are to be found in late 18th and 19th century Slavic Romanticism, which glorified the pre-Christian beliefs of Slavic societies. Active religious practitioners devoted to establishing Slavic native faith appeared in Poland and Ukraine in the 1930s and 1940s. Following the Second World War and the establishment of communist states throughout the Eastern Bloc, new variants were established by Slavic emigrants living in Western countries, being later introduced in Central and Eastern European countries after the collapse of the Soviet Union. In recent times, the movement has been increasingly studied in academic scholarship. Overview Scholars of religion regard Slavic native faith as a modern pagan religion. They also characterize it as a new religious movement. The movement has no overarching structure, or accepted religious authority, and contains much diversity in terms of belief and practice. The sociologist of religion Karina Adamerto suggests that Rodnovery is sufficiently heterogeneous that it could be regarded itself not as a singular religion but as an umbrella term that gathers together various forms of religiosity. The scholar of religion Alexei Gaidukov described Slavic neopaganism as a term pertaining to all quasi-religious, political, ideological and philosophical systems which are based on the reconstruction and construction of pre-Christian Slavic traditions. The scholar of religion Adrian Ivakiev describes the religion as a movement which harkens back to the pre-Christian beliefs and practices of ancient Slavic peoples. While according to the historian and ethnologist Victor A. Schneirelman, Rodnovers present themselves as "...followers of some genuine pre-Christian Slavic, Russian or Slavic Aryan paganism." Some involved in the movement avoid calling their belief system either "...paganism," or "...religion." Many Rodnovers refer to their belief system as an "...ethnic religion," and Rodnover groups were involved in establishing the World Congress of Ethnic Religions. The usage of this term suggests that the religion is restricted to a particular ethnic group. Some practitioners regard ethnic religion as a term synonymous with native faith, but others perceive there as being a distinction between the two terms. According to Schneirelman, it was the Soviet Union's official scientific atheism, which severely weakened the infrastructure of universalist religions, combined with anti-Westernism and the research of intellectuals into an ancient Vedic 
religion of Russia, that paved the way for the rise of Rodnovery and other modern paganisms in Eastern Europe. After the Soviet Union, the pursuit of Rodnovery matured into the spiritual cultivation of organic folk communities in the face of what Rodnovers consider as the alien cosmopolitan forces which drive global assimilation, chiefly represented by the Abrahamic religions. In the Russian intellectual milieu, Rodnovery also presents itself as the ideology of nativism. Narodnichestvo, which in Rodnova's own historical analysis is destined to supplant what they call the mono ideologies, whose final bankruptcy the world is now witnessing. Topic: <laughs> Rodnovery as a new synthesis. Schneierlman states that, contrary to the beliefs of Rodnovers themselves, their religion does not actually constitute the restoration of any pre-Christian religion as such." Rather, he describes the movement as having been "...built up artificially by urbanized intellectuals who use fragments of early pre-Christian local beliefs and rites in order to restore national spirituality." In this way, Slavic native faith has been understood—at least in part—as an invented tradition, or a form of folklorismus. Simpson notes, studying the specific context of Poland, that unlike historical Slavic beliefs, which were integral to the everyday fabric of their society, modern Slavic native faith believers have to develop new forms of social organization which set them apart from established society. Textual evidence for historical Slavic religion is scant, has been produced by Christian writers hostile to the systems being described and is usually open to multiple interpretations. In developing Slavic native faith, practitioners draw upon the primary sources about the historical religion of Slavic peoples, as well as elements drawn from later Slavic folklore, official and popular Christian belief, and from non Slavic societies. Among these foreign influences have been beliefs and practices drawn from Hinduism, Buddhism, Zoroastrianism, Germanic heathenry, Siberian shamanism, as well as ideas drawn from various forms of esotericism. Other influences include documents like the Book of Velez, which claim to be genuine accounts of historical Slavic religion but which academics recognize as later compositions. According to the folklorist Maria Lesev, through this syncretic process, a new religion is being created on the basis of the synthesis of elements from various traditions." Many Rodnovers do not acknowledge this practice of syncretism and instead profess an explicitly anti-syncretic attitude, emphasizing the need to retain the «purity» of the religion and thus maintain its «authenticity». <laughs> Slavic folk religion and double belief A different perspective is offered by Svetlana Chervanaya, who sees the return to folk beliefs among Slavs as part of a broader phenomenon that is happening to the mass religious mind, not merely of Slavic or Eastern European peoples, but to peoples all over Asia, and that expresses itself in new mythologems endorsed by national elites. The notion that modern Rodnovery is closely tied to the historical Slavic religion is a very strong one among practitioners. In crafting their beliefs and practices, Rodnovers adopt elements from recorded folk culture, including from the ethnographic record of the 19th and 20th centuries. Practitioners often legitimize the incorporation of elements from folk culture into Slavic native faith through the argument that Slavic folk practices have long reflected the so called double belief. Devavri, a conscious preservation of pre-Christian beliefs and practices alongside Christianity. This is a concept that was especially popular among 19th-century ethnographers who were influenced by Romanticism and retains widespread popularity across Eastern Europe, but has come under criticism in more recent times. Slavic Christianity was influenced by indigenous beliefs and practices as it was established in the Middle Ages, and these folk practices changed greatly over the intervening millennia. According to this, Rodnovers claim that they are just continuing living tradition. The concept of double belief is especially significant in Russia and for the identity of the Russian Orthodox Church. In that country, it is an oft cited dictum that, although Russia was baptized, it was never Christianized. Since the collapse of the Soviet Union there has been a new wave of scholarly debate on the subject within Russia itself. A. E. Musin, an academic and deacon of the Russian Orthodox Church published an article about the problem of double belief as recently as 1991. In this article he divides scholars between those who say that Russian Orthodoxy adapted to entrenched indigenous faith, continuing the Soviet idea of an undefeated paganism 
and those who say that Russian Orthodoxy is an out and out syncretic religion. Slavic native faith adherents, as far as they are concerned, believe that they can take traditional folk culture, remove the obviously Christian elements, and be left with something that authentically reflects the historical beliefs of the Slavic peoples. Ivakiv says that despite the intense efforts of Christian authorities, the Christianization of the Slavs, and especially of Russians, was very slow and resulted in a thorough synthesis of pagan and Christian elements. Reflected for instance in the refashioning of gods as Christian saints Perrin as Saint Elias, Velez as Saint Blasius and Urillo as Saint George and in the overlapping of Christian festivals on pagan ones. The scholar of Russian folk religion Linda J. Ivanitz reports ethnographic studies documenting that even in late 19th and early 20th century Russia there were entire villages maintaining indigenous religious beliefs, whether in pure form or under the cover of a superficial Christianity. According to her, the case of Russia is exceptional compared to Western Europe, because Russia neither lived the intellectual upheavals of the Renaissance, nor the Reformation, nor the other movements which severely weakened folk spirituality in Europe. <laughs> Symbolism Media related to Rodnover symbols at Wikimedia Commons The most commonly used religious symbol within Rodnovery is the Kalavrat spinning wheel a variant of the swastika sanskrit well-being wellness as such it represents wholeness the ultimate source of renewal the cosmic order and the four directions according to the studies of boris rybakov whirl and wheel symbols which also include patterns like the six-petaled rose inside a circle eg and the thunder mark Gromovoy Znak, represent the Supreme God Rod, expressing itself as power of birth and reproduction, in its various forms whether Triglov, Svetovid, Perun and other gods and were still carved in folk traditions of North Russia up to the 19th century. The contemporary design of the symbol called Kalavrat, the eight-spoked wheel, used by Rodnovers was already present in woodcuts produced in the 1920s by the Polish artist Stanislaw Jakubowski, under the name Slonechko, Little Sun. Topic. Terminology Topic. Rodnovery Native faith The majority of practitioners of modern Slavic paganism call their religion native faith. This term appears in slightly different forms depending on the Slavic language in question. In Ukrainian, it is Rodnoverstvo or Rodnoviria, in Russian Rodnovery, in Polish Rodzimovirstvo, and in Czech Rodnovery. The term derives from the Proto-Slavic roots asterisk rod, rod which means anything, indigenous, ancestral, and native, also, genus, generation, kin, race, cf. Russian rodna rodnaya or rodnoj rodnoy, an asterisk vera, which means, faith, religion. Within the community, it has also been used to define an elective community, namely the community of native faith practitioners themselves. The term has different histories and associations in each of these languages. The suffix ism is usually avoided in favor of others that describe the religion as if it were a practice or craft which is the meaning of the Ukrainian and Russian suffix stvo, thus translatable with the English suffix ari, rai. Sometimes the term rodnovery has also been interpreted as meaning faith of rod a reference to an eponymous concept found in ancient russian and ukrainian sources the earliest known usage of this term was by the ukrainian emigre lev selenko who in 1964 established a mimeographed publication in canada that was titled ridnovira native faith as an endonym the term ridnovir was in use among ukrainians involved in the movement by at least 1995 from Ukraine, the term began to spread throughout other Slavic countries. In 1996, it was adopted by a Polish group, the Association of Native Faith, Zr Zezeni Rodzimej Wieri, and in 1997 by the Russian Union of Slavic Native Belief Communities, Sus Slavanska Obsin Slavanskij Rodnoj Veri. By the early 2000s, the term was widespread across Slavic language countries. In 2002, six Russian Rodnover organizations issued the Bitsa Agreement in which they expressed the view that Rodnovery should be regarded as the foremost name of the religion. 
The spread of the term reflected the degree of solidarity in establishing a broader brand and a sense of international movement despite the disagreements and power struggles that permeated the groups. The term also came to be applied to the modern pagan religions of non-Slavic groups, for instance, in the Polish language Lithuanian Romuva has been referred to as Rodzimowierstwo Litewski Lithuanian native faith", and Celtic paganism has been referred to as Rodzimowierstwo Celtiki Celtic native faith". Adamerto stated that in addition to being the most used term, it is appropriate because of its meanings. Aside from its immediate acceptation, it has deeper senses related to its Slavic etymology that would be lost through translation, expressing the central concepts of the Slavic native faith. Rod is conceived as the absolute, primordial God, supreme ancestor of the universe, that begets all things, and at the same time as the kin, the lineage of generation which is the ancestral bond to the supreme source. Rodna or Rodnaya is itself a concept which can denote the nearest and dearest and such impersonal community as one's native home or land. Topic. Orthodoxy, old belief, Vedism, and other terms The appropriate name of the religion is an acute topic of discussion among practitioners active on social media. Many Rodnovers have adopted terms that are already used to refer to other religions, namely the historical Vedic religion and Orthodox Christianity. For instance, the St. Petersburg-based Union of the Venids Soyuz Venidov, is one of the major organizations of the branch of Rodnovery known as Peterburgian Vedism. They explain that Vedism derives from the word to know and implies that rather than dogmatically believing Verit, Vedists know or C. Vedic spiritual truths. The term was first employed by Yuri P. Moralibov, the writer or discoverer of the Book of Velas, in the mid 20th century, and later adopted by the founder of Peterburgian Vedism, Viktor Bezverki. In Ukraine and Russia, many important Rodnover groups advocate the designation of orthodoxy. Russian Pravoslavy Pravoslavia, Ukrainian Pravoslava Pravoslavia, for themselves. They claim that the term, which refers to the universal order prav, cf. Vedic Urda, was usurped by the Christians. Another term employed by Rodnovers, but historically associated to the Orthodox Christian movement of the Old Believers, is Staroveri, cf. Russian, Staroveri Staroveri, Old Faith. Some Slovenian practitioners use the Slovenian language term AJD, which is a loan word of the Germanic language heathen. When using English language terms to describe their religion, some Rodnovers favor heathen, in part due to a perceived affinity with the contemporary Germanic heathens who also commonly use that term. Another term employed by some Rodnovers has been practice of the Slavs, which appears especially in Polish and in Slovakian. Some Russians refer to their religion as Slavism and claim that the word Slav originally meant he who praises his gods. Topic. General descriptors, Western, Pagan, and Slavic Yazic In Slavic languages the closest equivalent of paganism is poganstvo taking for instance Russian, it itself deriving from Latin paganus, although Rodnovers widely reject this term due to its derogatory connotations. Indeed, many Slavic languages have two terms that are conventionally rendered as pagan in Western languages, the aforementioned pogan and azik yazic. The latter, which is a derivation of the near homophonous azik yazic, tongue, is prevalent and has a less negative acceptation, literally meaning pertaining to our own language. It is often more accurately, though by no means thoroughly, translated as gentile, i.e., pertaining to the gens to the kin, which in turn it itself renders in Slavic translations of the Bible. Some Russian and Ukrainian Rodnovers employ, respectively, Yazichestvo and Yazichnitstvo i.e., our own language craft, gentility, but it is infrequent. Yazic has been adopted especially among Rodnovers speaking West Slavic languages, where it has not any connotations related to paganism. Thus, Czech Rodnover groups have coined Jazyknyktvi and Slovak Rodnovers have coined Jazyknyktvo. By the mid 1930s, the term neo pagan had been applied to the Polish Zadruga group. It was adopted among Rodnovers in the 1990s 
when it appeared in such forms as the Russian Neoyazychestvo and the Polish Neopogonstwo but had been eclipsed by Slavic native faith in the 2000s. However, the prefix neo within neopaganism is a divisive issue among Rodnovers. Some practitioners dislike it because it minimizes the continuity of indigenous pre Christian beliefs. They regard themselves as restoring the original belief system rather than creating something new. Others embrace the term as a means of emphasizing what they regard as the reformed nature of the religion. The Polish Rodnover Maciej Zarnowski, for instance, encouraged the term because it distinguished his practices from those of the pre Christian societies, which he regarded as being hindered by superstition and unnecessary practices like animal sacrifice. Many Rodnovers straightforwardly reject the designator, paganism, whether neo, modern, contemporary or without prefixes and further qualificators, asserting that these are poorly defined concepts whose use by scholars leads to a situation in which Rodnovery is lumped together with all kinds of cults and religions, which have nothing to do with it. Topic. Beliefs Topic. Theology and cosmology Prior to their Christianization, the Slavic peoples were polytheists, worshipping multiple deities who were regarded as the emanations of a supreme god. According to Helmold's Chronica Slavorum compiled 1168-1169, "...obeying the duties assigned to them, the deities have sprung from his the supreme god's blood and enjoy distinction in proportion to their nearness to the god of the gods." Belief in these deities varied according to location and through time, and it was common for the Slavs to adopt deities from neighboring cultures. Both in Russia and in Ukraine, modern Rodnovers are divided among those who are monotheists and those who are polytheists. Some practitioners describe themselves as atheists, believing that gods are not real entities but rather ideal symbols. Monotheism and polytheism are not regarded as mutually exclusive. The shared underpinning is a pantheistic view that is holistic in its understanding of the universe. Similarly to the ancient Slavic religion, a common theological stance among Rodnovers is that of monism, by which the many different gods polytheism are seen as manifestations of the single, universal God—generally identified by the concept of Rod, also known as Sud judge, and Prabhag pre -god, first God, among South Slavs. In the Russian and Ukrainian centers of Rodnover theology, the concept of Rod has been emphasized as particularly important. The root asterisk Rod is attested in sources about pre Christian religion referring to divinity and ancestrality. Matthew Kolas defines Rod as the primordial god, but the term also literally means the generative power of family and kin, birth, origin, and fate as well. Its negative form, urid, means something wrenched, deformed, degenerated, monstrous. Sometimes, the meaning of the word is left deliberately obscure among Rodnovers, allowing for a variety of different interpretations. Cosmologically speaking, Rod is conceived as the spring of universal emanation, which articulates in a cosmic hierarchy of gods. Rod expresses itself as prav, literally, right, or order, cf. Greek orthotes, Sanskrit urda in primordial undeterminacy chaos, through a dual dynamism, represented by Belobog, white god, and Chernobog, black god, the forces of waxing and waning, and then giving rise to the world in its three qualities, prav yav nav, triglav, three-headed one, and svetovid, world seer are concepts representing the axis mundi and, respectively, the three qualities of reality and their realization in the four dimensions of space. When emphasizing this monism, Rodnovers may define themselves as Rodnianin, believers in God, or in nativity, in genuinity. Already the pioneering Ukrainian leader Shayan argued that God manifests as a variety of different deities. This theological explanation is called manifestationism by some contemporary Rodnovers and implies the idea of a spirit-matter continuum, the different gods, who proceed from the supreme god, generate differing categories of things not as their external creations as objects, but embodying themselves as these entities. In their view, beings are the progeny of gods, even phenomena such as the thunder are conceived in this way as embodiments of these gods in this case, Perrin. In the wake of this theology, it is common among Slavic native faith practitioners to say that 
We are not God's slaves, but God's sons. Some Rodnover groups espouse the idea that specific Slavic populations are the sons of peculiar facets of God, for instance, groups who rely upon the 10th century manuscript The Lay of Igor's Host may affirm the idea that Russians are the grandchildren of Dazbog, the giving God. Day God. Pantheons of deities are not unified among practitioners of Slavic native faith. Different Rodnover groups often have a preference for a particular deity over others. The Union of Russian Rodnover Communities founded and led by Vadim Kazakov recognizes a pantheon of over 30 deities emanated by the Supreme Rod, these include attested deities from Slavic pre-Christian and folk traditions, slavicized Hindu deities such as Vaishan, i.e. Vishnu, and Intra, i.e. Indra, Iranian deities such as Simurgal and Kors, deities from the Book of Velez such as Pisihilik and figures from Slavic folk tales such as the wizard Kashe. Another Russian Rodnover leader, Nikolai Speransky Volk H. V. Velimer, emphasizes a dualistic eternal struggle between forces of good and evil, the former represented by Belobog, who created the human soul, and the latter by Chernobog, who created the human body. Rodnovers also believe and worship tutelary deities of specific elements, lands and environments, such as waters, forests and the household. Gods may be subject to functional changes among modern Rodnovers, for instance, the traditional god of livestock and poetry Velez is called upon as the god of literature and communication. In Ukraine, there has been a debate as to whether the religion should be monotheistic or polytheistic. In keeping with the pre-Christian belief systems of the region, the groups who inherit Volodymyr Shayan's tradition, among others, espouse polytheism. Conversely, Solenko's native Ukrainian national faith Runvira, also called Solenkoism, regards itself as monotheistic and focuses its worship upon a single god who they identify with the name Dazbog. For members of this group, Dazbog is regarded as the life-giving energy of the cosmos. Solenko characterized Dazbog as light, endlessness, gravitation, eternity, movement, action, the energy of unconscious and conscious being." Based on this description, Ivakiv argued that Selenkoit theology might better be regarded as pantheistic or panentheistic rather than monotheistic. Selenko acknowledged that the ancient Ukrainian Rus were polytheists but believed that a monotheistic view reflected an evolution in human spiritual development and thus should be adopted. A similar view is adopted by Russian Inglism. Lesiv recorded one Runvira member who related that, We cannot believe in various forest, field and water spirits today. Yes, our ancestors believed in these things but we should not any longer. For native Ukrainian national faiths members, polytheism is regarded as backward. Some polytheist Rodnovers have regarded the approach adopted by Selenko's followers as an inauthentic approach to the religion. Topic. Morality and ethics Rodnovery emphasizes the this worldliness of morality and moral thinking, seen as a voluntary and thoughtful responsibility towards the others that sprouts from the awareness of the interconnectedness of all things and of the continuity of spirit matter and not as a strict set of rules. Although some Rodnovers believe in an afterlife, Iriy or Viri, they argue that retribution is not deferred to such future, since gods manifest themselves as the natural phenomena, and in people as lineage descendants, Rodnovers believe that actions and their outcomes unfold and are to be dealt with in the present world. People are viewed as having unique responsibilities towards their own contexts, for instance, the right of parents is to take care of their children, the right of ancestors is to be honored, and the land deserves to be wrecked and cultivated. Rodnovers blame Christianity for transferring personal responsibility into a transcendent future, when actions will be judged by God and people either smitten or forgiven for their sins, in fact exempting people from responsibility. According to Rodnovers, justice and truth have to be realized in this life, so that turning the other cheek, waiving agency and intervention in the things of this world, is considered immoral and equivalent to welcoming wrongness. In other words, fleeing from the commitment towards the forces at play in the present context is the same as denying the gods, it disrupts morality, impairing the individual, society, and the world itself. Rodnovers value individual responsibility as the cornerstone for the further maturation of humanity, equating the conversion to Rodnovery with such maturation. This emphasis on individuality is not at odds with the value of solidarity, since collective responsibility is seen as arising from the union of the right free decisions of reflexive individuals. 
By using terms of Emile Durkheim, Adamerto says that what Rodnovers reject is egoistic individualism, not moral individualism. Immediately related to the morality of a responsible community is the respect for the umbagoing context and the natural world in general, or what Adamerto defines ecological responsibility. Rodnover ethics deal with a wide range of contemporary social issues. Through the categories of contemporary sociology, Rodnover views are generally defined conservative. Adamerto summarized these views as, patriarchy, solidarity and homogeneity, with the latter two seen as intrinsically related. Schneierlman observed that Rodnova's calls for social justice tend to apply only to their own perceived ethnic community. There have been difficulties with Rodnover involvement in the wider environmentalist movement as a result of many environmentalists' unease with the racial and anti Christian themes that are prominent in the religion. Within Rodnovery, gender roles are generally conservative. Rodnovers often subscribe to the view that men and women are fundamentally different and thus their tasks also differ. Men are seen as innately disposed towards public life and abstract thought, while women are seen as better realizing themselves in the private administration of the family and the resources of the house. Rodnovers therefore reinforce traditional values in Slavic countries rather than being countercultural, presenting themselves as a stabilizing and responsible social force. They may even view their upholding of social traditionalism as a counterculture in itself, standing in the face of modernism and globalism, ideas and practices perceived as coming from Western liberal society—which Rodnovers perceive as degenerate are denounced as threats to Slavic culture, for instance, alcohol and drug consumption, various sexual behaviors and miscegenation are commonly rejected by Rodnovers, while they emphasize healthy family life in harmonious environments. Adamerto and Gaidukov noted that, hardly any women, in Russian Rodnovery would call themselves feminists, partly due to Rodnover beliefs on gender and partly due to the negative associations that the word, feminism, has in Russian culture. In adopting such a conservative stance to sexual ethics, practitioners of Rodnovery can adopt misogynistic and homophobic attitudes. Adamerto and Gaidukov noted that it would be difficult to imagine that any Rodnover community would accept members who are openly homosexual. Many groups in both Russia and Ukraine critique mixed race unions, for instance, the English Church's doctrine articulates a condemnation of race mixing as unhealthy. The Russian based circle of pagan tradition distinguishes itself for its more accommodating positions compared to those of other organizations about the coexistence of different lifestyles, holding that tolerance should be a key value. They reflect their stance in the slogan, Unity in Diversity. This organization has also placed greater emphasis on environmentalist issues over nationalist ones, and has called on its members to vote for the Green Russia Party. Topic. Identity and political philosophy There is no evidence that the early Slavs ever conceived of themselves as a unified ethno-cultural group. There is an academic consensus that the Proto-Slavic language developed from about the second half of the first millennium BCE in an area of Central and Eastern Europe bordered by the Dnieper Basin to the east, the Vistula Basin to the west, the Carpathian Mountains to the south and the forests beyond the Pripet Basin to the north. Over the course of several centuries, Slavic populations migrated in northern, eastern and southwestern directions. In doing so, they branched out into three sublinguistic families, the Eastern Slavs Ukrainians, Belarusians, Russians, the Western Slavs Poles, Czechs, Slovaks and the Southern Slavs Slovenes, Serbs, Croats, Macedonians and Bulgarians. The belief systems of these Slavic communities had many affinities with those of neighboring linguistic populations, such as the Balts, Thracians and Indo-Iranians. Vyacheslav Ivanov and Vladimir Toporov studied the origin of ancient Slavic themes in the common substratum represented by Proto-Indo-European religion and what Georges Dumézel studied as the trifunctional hypothesis. Maria Gimbutas, instead, found Slavic religion to be a clear result of the overlap of Indo-European patriarchism and pre-Indo-European matrifocal beliefs. Boris Rybakov emphasized the continuity and complexification of Slavic religion through the centuries. The scholar of religion Scott Simpson states that Slavic native faith is "...fundamentally concerned with questions of community and ethnic identity," while folklorist Nemanja Radulovic described practitioners as placing "...great emphasis on their national or regional identity." 
Rodnovery typically displays greater concern for collective rights than individual rights. Most Rodnover groups will permit only Slavs as members, although there are a few exceptions. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Ethnic nationalism. Slavic native faith's world view is often ethnic nationalist in basis. Adamerto suggested that Russian Rodnova's conceptions of nationalism encompass three main themes: that the Russian or Slavic people are a distinct group, that they have or their heritage has some superior qualities, and that this unique heritage or the existence of this ethnic group is now threatened, and, therefore, it is of vital importance to fight for it. Many Rodnovers espouse socio political views akin to those of the French Nouvelle Droite. Some blame many of the world's problems on the mixing of ethno cultural groups, and emphasize the idea of ethnic purity. Some Rodnovers promote racial segregation, and have demanded a prohibition on mixed race marriages. Some Rodnovers regard ethnic minorities living in Slavic countries as a cause of social injustice, and encourage the removal of those regarded as aliens from Russia, namely those who are Jewish or have ethnic origins in the Caucasus, an approach that could require ethnic cleansing. Other Rodnovers are openly anti-Semitic, for instance urging fellow Rodnovers not to get involved with Jews, and endorsing anti-Semitic conspiracy theories claiming that Jews control the economic and political elite. Many Rodnovers oppose what they regard as culturally destructive phenomena such as cosmopolitanism, liberalism and globalization, as well as Americanization and consumerism. The political models proposed by Rodnovers is based on their interpretation of the ancient Slavic community model of the Vesh assembly, similar to the ancient Germanic thing. Western liberal ideas of freedom and democracy are traditionally perceived by Russian eyes as outer freedom, contrasting with Slavic inner freedom of the mind. In Rodnova's view, Western liberal democracy is destined to execute the primitive desires of the masses or to work as a tool in the hands of a ruthless elite, being therefore a mean-spirited rule of demons. Some Rodnovers interpret the Vesh in ethnic terms, thus as a form of ethnic democracy. In the wake of similar concepts found in the French Nouvelle Droite, there are Rodnovers with extreme right-wing nationalist views, including those who are neo-Nazi and openly inspired by Nazi Germany. Many other Rodnovers deny or downplay the racist and Nazi elements within their community, and claim that extreme right-wingers are not true believers in Slavic native faith because their interests in the movement are primarily political rather than religious. Schneierlman noted that there was a loose boundary between the explicitly politicized and less politicized wings of the Russian movement, adding that ethnic nationalist and racist views were present even in those Rodnovers who did not identify as explicitly political. Rodnover ideas and symbols have also been adopted by many Russian nationalists, including in the Russian skinhead movement, not all of whom embrace Rodnovery as a religion. Some of these far-right groups merge Rodnover elements with others adopted from Germanic heathenry and from Russian Orthodox Christianity. A number of young practitioners of Slavic native faith have been detained on terrorism charges in Russia. Between 2008 and 2009, teenaged Rodnovers forming a group called the Slavic Separatists conducted at least 10 murders and planted bombs across Moscow targeting Muslims and non ethnic Russians. In countries like Poland and Russia, there has been an increasing depoliticization of the Slavic native faith community in the 21st century. Adamerto and Shizhensky suggested that expressions of ultra-nationalism were considered socially unacceptable at one of the largest Rodnover event in Russia, the Kupala festival outside Maloyaroslavets. Itarmerto suggested that the different wings of the Rodnover movement attract different kinds of people approaching the religion from quite diverging points of departure. For instance, the circle of pagan tradition characterize themselves as patriots rather than nationalists, avoid ethnic nationalist ideas, and recognize Russia as a multi-ethnic and multi-cultural state. Topic. Views on Slavic and Indo-European history Schneierlman notes that the movement is "...obsessed with the idea of origin." Many Rodnovers legitimize their practices by according their Slavic ancestors great cultural achievements. Academics studying the movement have described these views of the past as extremely imaginative and exaggerated, rather fantastic, and linked to pseudo-historical ideas. 
However, Adamerto and Gaidukov later noted that the wildly imaginative ideas typical of the 1980s were in decline, and that within Russia at least a more realistic attitude to the past was gaining ground. In the 21st century, many within the movement regard the Book of Velez as a holy text, and as a genuine historical document. Some Rodnovers take their cosmology, ethical system, and ritual practices from the book. The fact that many scholars outspokenly reject the book as a modern, 20th century composition has added to the allure that the text has for many Rodnovers. According to them, such criticism is an attempt to suppress knowledge carried forward either by Soviet-style scientism or by Judaic cosmopolitan forces. Other modern literary works that have influenced the movement, albeit on a smaller scale, include the Songs of the Bird Gamayan, Koliada's Book of Stars, the Song of the Victory on the Jewish Khazaria of Sviatoslav the Brave or the Rigveda of Kiev. Some Rodnovers pejoratively dismiss movements such as that of the Seyusvetnaya Gramota as New Age and claim that reliance on them discredits the Slavic native faith movement. Some Rodnovers believe that Slavs constitute a race whose origin is distinct from that of other ethnic groups. According to them, Slavs are the directest descendants of an ancient Aryan race, whom they equate with the Proto-Indo-Europeans. Some Rodnovers believe that the Aryans originated at the North Pole but moved south as a result of declining temperatures, while others claim that the Aryans germinated in Russia's southern steppes. In claiming an Aryan ancestry, Slavic native faith practitioners legitimize their cultural borrowing from other ethno-cultural groups who they claim are also Aryan descendants, such as the Germanic peoples or those of the Indian subcontinent. Some Rodnovers regard Slavic countries as having a messianic role in humanity's future, for instance with the belief that Ukraine will be the world's future geopolitical center, or that Russia will be the home of a post-apocalyptic civilization which will survive the demise of the Western world. Such racially eschatological beliefs are explicitly rejected by other Rodnovers, like the circle of pagan tradition. Although their understanding of the past is typically rooted in spiritual conviction rather than in arguments that would be acceptable within academia, many Rodnovers seek to promote their beliefs about the past among academics. For instance, in 2002 Serbian Rodnovers established Svevlad, a research group devoted to historical Slavic religion which simulated academic discourse but was highly selective, unsystematic, and distorted," in its examination of the evidence. In several Slavic countries, many archaeologists and historians have been hesitant about giving credence to Rodnover interpretations of the past. In turn, practitioners have accused academics of being part of a conspiracy to conceal the truth about the past. Topic. Views on Christianity Many Rodnovers actively reject Christianity or adopt anti-Christian views. Practitioners generally regard Abrahamic religions as a destructive force that erodes what they view as organic peoples, with Christianity being perceived as a foreign force that is destroying Slavic culture. Some Rodnovers also take a hostile stance toward Judaism, which they regard as having spawned Christianity, or believe that Christianity has left Russia under the control of Jews. Rodnovers often reject Christian ideas of humility, regarding them as antithetical to a Rodnover emphasis on courage and fighting spirit. Christianity is considered as a system that destroys morality by casting human responsibility away from the present world and into a transcendent future, and it is also criticized as being anthropocentric, and thus responsible for ecological disruption. In Russia, Rodnovers often criticize Christianity for its claim to have a monopoly on truth, in regarding it as a mono-ideology, they compare it to Soviet Marxism. Some practitioners also regard capitalism as a creation of Abrahamic religions and seek to return to a pre-capitalist society, believing that their ideology will supplant mono-ideologies. Like Christianity in the future, Rodnovers express their anti-Christian views in various ways. Many native faith groups organize formal ceremonies of renunciation of Christianity Raskrestitsia, literally, de-Christianization, in which they adopt a new Slavic name. The folklorist Maria Lesev observed Rodnovers marching in Kiev in 2006 chanting, Out with Jehovah! Glory to Dosbo! Simpson noted that in Poland, several Rodnovers launched a poster campaign against Valentine's Day, which they regarded as not being an authentically Polish celebration. 
In Russia, Rodnovers have vandalized and torched various churches. Christians have also been responsible for opposition to Slavic native faith, for instance through the establishment of social media groups against the movement. The Russian Orthodox Church has expressed opposition to the growth and spread of Slavic native faith across Russia on various occasions. Some Russian Rodnovers have however attempted to improve relations with the Orthodox Church, arguing that Russian Orthodoxy had adopted many elements of historical Slavic belief and rites. In this way they argue that Russian Orthodoxy is distinct from other forms of Christianity, and seek to portray it as the younger brother of Slavic native faith. The Orthodox Christian Old Believers, a movement that split out from the Russian Orthodox Church during the reform of Patriarch Nikon of Moscow in the 17th century, is seen by Rodnovers in a more positive light than the mainstream Russian Orthodox Church, as Old Believers are considered to have elements similar to those of the Slavic native faith. Topic. Organization, rites and practices Rodnovery is essentially a religion of the community, with most adherents actively joining organizations, only a minority of believers choose solitary practice. Sometimes, Slavic native faith groups send guests to the religious meetings of other groups, including those in other countries. Most Slavic native faith groups strongly emphasize the commemoration of ancestors in their religious practices. For many Rodnovers, greater importance is given to creating what they perceive as genuine. Slavic rituals rather than those which will be psychologically empowering. There is much variation in the patterns of organization and practice between different groups, and depending on the level such groups intend to represent, whether national or local. For instance, the Association of Sons and Daughters of Ukraine of the Native Ukrainian National Faith OSIDU Runvira, one of the churches of the Ukrainian Selenkoit branch of Rodnovery, holds unique weekly Holy Hour of Self-Realization in which practitioners read from Selenko's Maha Vira, sermons are given, the ancestors are commemorated, and prayers and hymns are given. The meeting ends with the singing of Shche Ne V Merla Ukraina, the national anthem of Ukraine. The rival and near homonymous association of sons and daughters of the native Ukrainian national faith OSID Runvira, also conducts weekly holy hours, but incorporates a wider selection of sources such as readings from the Pan Rodnover Book of Velez or the poetry of Taras Shevchenko, into the proceedings. The structure of these Sionkoit rites is modeled on those of the Eastern Orthodox Church. Adherents of Slavic native faith often adopt elements from recorded folk culture. Lesev described this process as one of paganization, whereby Christian or otherwise non-pagan elements are deliberately given a new meaning and purpose. In turn, some of these paganized folk practices have been transmitted through the wider population who has regarded them as authentic traditional practices some rodnover groups also incorporate non-slavic practices for instance a group of polish rodnovers has been documented to use the fire poi at their midsummer festivities a practice that originally developed in pacific regions during the mid 20th century the Ukrainian organization Ancestral Fire of the Native Orthodox Faith promotes a healing technique called jiva that has close similarities to the Japanese practice of Reiki. In another instance, Lesev observed a Ukrainian Rodnover who legitimized the practice of yoga by claiming that this spiritual tradition had originally been developed by the ancestors of modern-day Ukrainians. Another example are groups within Peterburgian Vedism which incorporate Ivanovite healing techniques. Rituals take place at secluded, consecrated spaces, and generally include the invocation of gods, sacrifices, and the pouring of libations, circle dances, horovod or simply kolo, circle, and usually end with a communal meal. Some Rodnover organizations require that participants wear traditional Slavic clothes for such gatherings, although there is much freedom in interpreting what constitutes traditional clothes this definition generally referring to folkloric needlecraft open to a wide range of artistic patterns besides the rites of outgang from christianity raskrestitsia rodnovers practice rituals of initiation of the new members into the community of eselvic native faith central to this conversion is the renaming that is to say the adoption of a new slavic name symbolizing the death and rebirth of the convert into the new community some groups, such as male brotherhoods, practice the cutting of a second lifeline on the palm of the hand of converts, symbolizing the new blood bond that is formed with other members. Topic. Communities, citadels and temples 
Rodnover organizations have inherited ideas of commonality and social governance from Slavic and Russian history. They recover the pre-Christian social institution of the Vesh assembly, which they also see as reflecting the concept of Sobornost formulated in 20th century Russian philosophy. Vesh is used as the name of many Rodnover overarching organizations, including the international Vesh of Slavic Native Faith, an assembly held each summer, to which adherents from Slavic countries take part. Adamerto characterizes the Vesh as a model of organization, from below and to the top, following descriptions given by Rodnovers themselves, that is to say a grassroots form of governance which matures into a consensual authority and or decision making. Local Rodnover groups usually call themselves obshchina the term for traditional peasant communities, while Skod, Sobor and Mir are used for informal meetings or to refer to traditional Russian ideas of commonality. Another term for a community, though not frequently used, is artel. A form of organization of Rodnover communities consists in the establishment of places for common living, such as fortresses Kremlin or citadels Gorodic, in which temples are umbagon by buildings for various social uses. The Slavic Kremlin Vitalaya Sundakova is one of such centers, located in the Podolsky district of Moscow Oblast. Some Rodnover networks have established thorough villages all over Russia. This is the case, among other examples, of those Rodnovers who are part of the Ringing Cedars movement. Rituals and religious meetings are often performed in rural settings, such as clearings in woodland. The basic structure of a temple of the Slavic native faith, Kapis Kapishchi, or Ram, Krom, is constituted by a sacred precinct at the center of which are placed poles with carved images of the gods enshrined. These poles, or statues, are called rotovoy, stolb, kur, but also kapi, poles. There are many such basic temples throughout Russia, Belarus and Ukraine. A large, elaborate temple of this type is projected to be built in Khabarovsk. In 2015, the Temple of Sverizik's Fire, in the form of a simple wooden architecture, was opened by the Union of Slavic Native Belief Communities in Krasotinka, Kaluga. Gaidukov 2013 documented that in the 2000s Rodnovers erected a statue of Perrin in a park near Kupchino in St. Petersburg, although they did not obtain official permission first. The statue remained in place for some time until being removed by the authorities in 2007 when a decision was made to construct a church nearby. Topic. Priesthood In Slavic native faith, priests are distinguishable into the orders of Volk HV translatable as wiseman, wizard, i.e., shaman, or mage, and zurits, sacrificers. They are those responsible for holding rites for worshipping the gods and leading communities and religious festivals. Volkovs are the higher rank of the sacerdotal hierarchy, while Zurits are of a lower authority, though the majority of Rodnover priests are males. Rodnover groups do not exclude women from the priesthood, so that a parallel female priesthood is constituted by the two ranks of Zitsa and Vidunya. Cirises. Prestige is not limited to male priests. A priestess, Helena Lozko from Ukraine, is an acknowledged authority within the Rodnover movement. In 2012, a number of Rodnover organizations in Russia made an agreement for the mutual recognition of their priesthood and for the uniformization of ordination policies. Topic: <laughs> Calendars and holidays. According to Adamerto, rituals play a central role in defining, learning and transmitting the religion, and thus they constitute an important complement to theology within Rodnovery. Ceremonial accuracy is often considered essential for the efficacy of a ritual. Nevertheless, Rodnover rituals may be regarded as flexible frameworks, wherein there is room for elaboration and experimentation. The sources that Rodnovers rely upon are valued scholars like Vladimir Dahl and Boris Rybakov. The common Rodnover ritual calendar is based on the Slavic folk tradition, whose crucial events are the four solstices and equinoxes set in the four phases of the year. Slavic native faith has been described as following the cycles of nature. A festival that is believed to be the most important by many Rodnovers is that of the summer solstice, the Kupala night, June 23 to 24. Although also important are the winter solstice festival Karachun and Kolyada, December 24 to 25, and the spring equinox festival Shrovetide, called Komoeditsa or Maslanitsa, March 24. Festivals celebrated in spring include the Day of Urillo and the Krasnaya Gorka literally, Red Hill, 
celebrated between April 30 to May 1, the latter dedicated to ancestor worship, while in autumn Rodnovers celebrate the day of Marzana and that of Makish November 10. Other festivals include the days of Velez multiple, in January and February and the day of Perun August 2, the latter considered to be the most important holiday of the year by some Rodnover organizations. Usually, the organization of festivals involves three layers of society, there is a patronizing core of practitioners, who are often professionally affirmed people, usually belonging to the intellectual class, then there is the population of committed adherents, and then there is a loose periphery constituted by sympathizers, generally relatives and friends of the committed followers. Aitmurto notes that festivals are usually set in the evenings, the weekends and on public holidays, in order to allow everyone's participation. Shizhensky and Adamurto described one Kupala festival, held over the course of three days outside Maloyaroslavets in Russia. At this event, weddings, purification rituals, and name giving ceremonies took place, accompanied by musical performances, martial arts, and folkloric plays, while a market sold traditional handicrafts. The interplay with the gods and the cycle of nature which they represent is displayed through large scale ceremonies, which Adamurto defines as aesthetically lavish. Vectors of a great deal of creativity. For instance, the end of winter is marked by burning straw images of Marzana, the goddess of winter, while celebrating the victory of Urillo, the god of the full swing of natural forces. The end of summer, instead, is marked by the burial of an image of Urillo. Some Slavic native faith organizations have appropriated or reappropriated Christian festivals. The same Kupala night is a reappropriation, being the day of the year when Christian churches set the nativity of Saint John the Baptist. The calendar of one of the organizations of the native Ukrainian national faith includes holidays that have been dechristianized, such as a Christmas of Dosbo's Light and an Easter of the Eternal Resurrection. The common Rodnover calendar leaves room for national and regional variations, for instance, the same native Ukrainian national faiths organization observes holidays devoted to Ukrainian national heroes such as Shevchenko, Ivan Franko, Bodin Komelnitsky, and Ryhori Skavoroda, as well as those devoted to more abstract concepts such as Ukrainian ancient literature and new Ukrainian literature. Artistic and other pursuits A number of Rodnovers have expressed their religion through visual arts. Among practitioners, Svyatoslav I of Kiev is one of the most popular subjects. Rodnover rituals and festivals often include martial arts displays, these sometimes symbolize seasonal change, such as the victory of spring over winter, or can be regarded as manifestations of bravery, strength, and honesty. Slavic Hill Wrestling Slavano Gorica Borba Slaviano Goritskaya Borba was established by the Russian Rodnover Alexander Belov. Other martial arts styles that are popular among Rodnovers are bench wrestling, Lavochki, and wall against wall, Stenka na Stenku. Topic: History. The origins of Slavic native faith have been traced to the Romantic movement of late 18th and 19th century Europe, which was a reaction against rationalism and the Age of Enlightenment. This was accompanied by a growth in nationalism across Europe, as intellectuals began to assert their own national heritage. Whereas calls to re-establish pre-Christian belief systems existed within the German and Austrian far-right nationalist movements during the early 20th century, the same did not happen in its Russian counterpart. In 1818, the Polish ethnographer Zorian Dolega Chodakowski Adam Zarnotsky in the work O Slawianczyzny Pesed Krzeszyjanstwem about Slavs before Christianity, declared himself a pagan, and stated that the Christianization of the Slavic peoples had been a mistake. Thus he became a precursor of return to Slavic religion in Poland and all Slavic countries. Similarly, the Polish philosopher Bronisław Trentowski saw the historical religion of the Slavs as a true path to understanding the divine creator, arguing that Christianity failed to do so. It was this romantic rediscovery and revaluing of historical and pre-Christian that prepared the way for the later emergence of Slavic native faith. 1930s to 1940s, early developments In Ukraine, the first practitioners of Slavic native faith appeared in the 1930s. 
One of the most influential Ukrainian Rodnover ideologues was Volodymyr Shyan, a linguist and philologist who worked at Lviv University. He claimed that in 1934 he underwent a spiritual revelation atop Mount Greket in the Carpathian Mountains, particularly interested in the ideas of an ancient Aryan race that were popular at the time. He subsequently began promoting what he called a pan Aryan Renaissance. He turned to recorded Ukrainian folklore to find what he regarded as the survivals of the ancient Slavic religion. In 1944, he fled the Soviet government and traveled to refugee camps in Germany and Austria. There, he established the Order of the Knights of the Solar God Orden of Boha Sancia, a religio-political group that he hoped would affiliate itself to the Ukrainian insurgent army. In Poland, Jan Stachniak established the Zadruga magazine in 1937. The term, Zadruga, itself was a reference to a South Slavic tribal unit. Continuing on from Dolega Chodakowski, Stachniuk's own work criticized Catholicism in Poland, arguing that it had had a negative effect on the country's national character. He did not develop his ideas into a religion, and those who shared his views remained a very loose and diverse intellectual clique. The magazine and its associated group embraced members with a wide variety of viewpoints, ranging from secularly humanistic to religiously Slavic native faith stances. He was nevertheless labeled a neopaganin neo by the Polish popular press, a term that he embraced as a self descriptor in later life. Vladislaw Kolodzij later claimed to have established a pre war holy circle of the worshippers of Svetovid, Sweet Kolo Svetovida, although there is no evidence that they conducted regular meetings until many years later. During the Second World War, Stefan Pitzuski led a unit in the peasant battalion which battled the Nazi German occupation forces. His unit had a shrine to the god Svetovid in their secret forest base and held group rites in which they toasted a wooden image of the deity with mead. Stachniak fought against the Nazi occupation during the Warsaw Uprising. Following the end of the war and the incorporation of Poland under a Stalinist regime, both Stachniak and Kolodzij were arrested, preventing the establishment of a Slavic native faith community. In 1954, a student group known as Clan Osran was established at the University of Lodz, officially dedicated to a study of Indo-European society. Its members provided hymns and prayers. A key influence on the movement was the circulation of the Book of Velez among Russian and Ukrainian emigres. This text was brought to the public by Yuri Moralobov, who claimed that it had been discovered by a friend of his, Fodor Artorovich Eisenbeck, while serving as a white army officer during the Russian Civil War. Moralobov alleged that the original text had been etched on wooden boards, but that these had been lost during the Second World War, leaving only his own copies. It is probable that the Book of Velez was a literary composition produced by Moralobov himself. In following decades the work would have caused a sensation, with many émigrés regarding it as a genuine 10th-century text. 1960s to 1980s, Soviet Union and Slavic diaspora in the West One of those who joined Cheyenne's group was Lev Selenko. He subsequently left Europe and moved first to Canada and then the United States. It was in Chicago that he established the earliest groups of the native Ukrainian national faith in 1966. Selenko presented himself as a prophet of Dozbog who had been sent to the Ukrainian people. In his view, the Ukrainians were the superior manifestation of the European peoples, and Kiev the oldest city of the white race. Selenko was a charismatic leader, whose followers praised his talents and oratorical skills. In 1979 he published Maha Vera, a book which he claimed chronicled the ancient history of the Ukrainian people. The system of Slavic native faith that he developed was influenced by deism and theosophy. A native Ukrainian national faith center, the Temple of Mother Ukraine, was established in Spring Glen, New York. Native Ukrainian national faith congregations were established among Ukrainian emigre communities in other parts of the United States, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, the United Kingdom, and Germany. During the Stalin era in the Soviet Union, research into prehistoric societies was encouraged, with some scholars arguing that pre-Christian society reflected a form of communitarianism that was damaged by Christianity's promotion of entrenched class divisions. In doing so, pre-Christian belief systems underwent a rehabilitation. Russian native faith originated in the Soviet dissident circles of the 1970s. 
An intellectual circle that cultivated themes of Slavic indigenous religion formed as a wing of the predominantly Orthodox Christian Samizdat nationalist journal Vesh Such group included Anatoly Ivanov, the artist Konstantin Vasilyev and Nikolai Bogdanov, among others. Vasilyev's art is widely celebrated within the Rodnover community. Ivanov, who declared himself a Zoroastrian and subscribed to Arism, or Slavism, published a fervently anti-Christian pamphlet entitled The Christian Plague, Christianskaya Chuma. Throughout the 1970s, the nationalist dissident movement split into two branches, an Orthodox Christian one and another one that developed national Bolshevism, which eventually continued to harbor pagan traditionalists. Other influential texts in this period were Valery Yemelinov's Dijanizatsiya, Dysionization, and later Istarkov's Uder Ruskik Bogov, The Strike of Russian Gods. In the Soviet Union, Slavic native faith groups had to operate in secret, although a few small groups were known to exist in Moscow and Leningrad. These groups were closely linked to the nationalistic circles operating during the 1980s. In Moscow, an occult circle was established by Yevgeny Golovin and Yuri Mamlyev. Although not explicitly pagan, they were influenced by occult pagan thinkers like Guido von Liszt and sought a return to a pre Christian Aryan world. In the early 1980s, the Pamyat movement was established by figures active at the Metropolitan Moscow Palace of Culture, which similarly looked with fondness on ancient Aryan culture. Several Russian nationalists also began to state that pre Christian belief systems were the true religion of the Russian people. Apollon Kuzmin did so in his 1988 book Padani Peruna. The Fall of Perun. In 1986, Viktor Bezverki established the Leningrad Saint Petersburg based Society of the Mages Volkvov, an explicitly white supremacist and anti Semitic organization. It was followed by the Union of the Venids, founded in 1990. These organizations gave rise to the stream of Rodnovery known as Peterburgian Vedism. 1990s to 2000s, post Soviet growth After Mikhail Gorbachev's Soviet government introduced the policy of perestroika in the 1980s, Slavic native faith groups established themselves in Ukraine. The collapse of the Soviet Union and its official policy of state atheism resulted in a resurgence of open religious adherence across the region. Many individuals arrived at Slavic native faith after exploring a range of different alternative spiritualities, with Asian religious influences being particularly apparent within Slavic native faith at that time. After the fall of the Soviet Union, Ukraine became an independent republic, with many Ukrainians turning to strongly nationalistic agendas. Among those to have done so are pseudo archaeologists like Yuri Shailov, who posits Ukraine as the cradle of civilization. It is within this broader milieu of cultural nationalism and interest in alternative spiritualities that Slavic native faith re-emerged in Ukraine. The United States-based native Ukrainian national faith established itself in Ukraine soon after independence, with the first congregation in Ukraine gaining official recognition in Kiev in 1991. There had been schisms in the international organization of native Ukrainian national faith. A number of senior followers broke with Selenko during the 1980s, rejecting the idea that he should be the ultimate authority in the religion. They formed the Association of Sons and Daughters of the Native Ukrainian National Faith and secured legal control of the temple in Spring Glen. A second group, the Association of Sons and Daughters of Ukraine of the Native Ukrainian National Faith maintained links with Selenko himself, whom it regards as a prophet, and adopted his Maha Vira as a sacred text. Despite the animosity that existed between these rival Ukrainian groups, there was some collaboration between them. In 2003, the first Forum of Rodnovers was held in the country, resulting in two public proclamations. The first urged the country's government to protect what the Rodnovers regarded as sacred sites and objects, and the second called on the government not to go ahead with the proposed privatization of agricultural land. That same year, a group called Ancestral Fire of the Native Orthodox Faith was established. In contrast to the anti Russian slant taken by Selenko, it embraced a pan Slavic perspective. The social context of Slavic native faith's growth in Russia differed from that in other parts of Central and Eastern Europe. Russian nationalists had welcomed the collapse of the Soviet system but were disappointed with the arrival of capitalism and the dramatic economic downturn that Russia faced in that decade. 
Large numbers became unemployed, and many turned to the past, including in ethnic terms. In this context, the growth of Rodnovery can be seen as a nationalistic project to regain national pride. Many leaders of early post-Soviet Rodnovery were intellectuals that were already practicing members of the movement in late Soviet times, for instance, Grigory Yakutovsky Vse Slav Sivitozer, Alexei Dobrovolsky Dobroslav, and Viktor Bezverky. Other leaders that emerged in this period were Alexander Asov, publisher of numerous versions of the Book of Velez, and Alexei Belov, founder of the martial arts style known as Slavic Hill Wrestling. Russian Rodnovers started to organize by the mid 1990s. In 1994, the Moscow Slavic community was the first Rodnover group to be registered by the government. Concerted efforts by the communities of Moscow and Kaluga led to the establishment of the Union of Slavic Native Belief Communities in 1997. The communities of Moscow and Obninsk later left the organization for ideological differences. Another organization, the Circle of Velez, which is one of the largest and administers communities also located in the territory of Ukraine, was founded in 1999. The English Church too was formally established in the early 1990s. In 2002, the same year of the Bitsa Agreement, the Circle of Pagan Tradition was established in Moscow. Its purpose was to bring together Russian Rodnovers who did not share the extreme right-wing views then dominant in much of the community. In 2009, the Union of Slavic Native Belief Communities and the Circle of Pagan Tradition issued a joint statement against Inglism, disapproving what they wreck as Inglists' pseudo-pagan teachings, pseudo-linguistics, pseudo-science and outright fiction. In Poland, the Wrocław-based publishing house Toporzel has reissued Stachnuk's works and those of his disciple Antony Wachik. Zadruga also inspired the Registered Religious Association of Native Faith ZR Zezeni Rodzimej Wiary, now called simply Rodzima Wiara RW, lit. Native Faith, whose founder Stanislaw Podzibowski wrote his doctoral thesis on pre-war Zadruga in German Zadruga, eine Volkische Bewegung in Poland. Another Slavic native faith group registered with the Polish authorities in 1995 is the Native Polish Church which represents a tradition that goes back to Wladyslaw Kolodzija's Holy Circle of the Worshippers of Svetovid. In 1998, a Czech native faith group called Rehost was founded by an Italian-born academic specialist in Slavic studies, Giuseppe Maiello. In 2000 this group merged with the extreme right nationalist National Front of the Pures to form the Rodna Vera group. This organization subsequently nurtured strong links with Rodnover groups in Slovakia, Poland, and Russia. The group broke apart following a schism in 2005. Rodnovery emerged in the former Yugoslav countries in the early 21st century. A Serbian native faith group known as Slavic Circle Krug existed during the 1990s and 2000s, merging historical Slavic religion with a ritual structure adopted from that of the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. In Slovenia, a group called the Svetovid Parish of the Old Belief Zupa Svetovid was established around 2005 through a union of an older group, Ajda, with the followers of military historian Matjaz Vratislav Anzer. As of 2013, it had between 10 and 15 members. The group organized an All Slavic Council for August 2009, which was held at Struga Castle. In 2011, the Circle of Svarog Krug was founded in Bosnia. During the 1990s and 2000s, a number of groups were established in Bulgaria, namely the Dulo Alliance, the Warriors of Tangra, and the Bulgarian Horde 1938. These groups had strong political motivations, being extremely nationalistic, anti-Western, and anti-Semitic. Rodnover figures and groups played a prominent role in the 2002 establishment of Angol, a Bulgarian far-right umbrella organization. The internet helped to bring about the growing uniformization of ritual practices across the Slavic native faith movement. The first Rodnover website on Russian internet, so-called Runet, was established by a Moscow-based believer in 1996. Many Rodnovers made use of Russian Wikipedia to promote their religion, although many found the process difficult and switched focus to promulgating Slavic native faith through LiveJournal and Mail.ru, through which they could express their own views more directly. From the mid-2000s, Rodnovers made increasing use of social media to communicate with other members of their community. Russian Rodnovery also attracted the attention of academics, many of whom focused on the political dimensions of the movement, thus neglecting other aspects of the community. 
Adamerto later criticized some of this Russian language material for reflecting scholars' own religious biases against Rodnovery, over reliance on the published texts of prominent figure, or for sensationalizing the subject to shock or impress their audience. This generated some mutual hostility between academics and practitioners, rendering subsequent scholarly fieldwork more difficult. Rodnover themes have also been employed in the heavy metal subculture, particularly in bands like Sokara Peruna, Perrin's Axe, White's Load, and Komuvnyz, Who Will Go Down. In Poland, Rodnovery has influenced various forms of folk and popular music. Topic. 2010s, Consolidations and War in Donbass The early 2010s saw a strengthening of relations between Rodnover groups. In 2012, in Russia, representatives of the Union of Slavic Native Belief Communities, the Circle of Pagan Tradition and the Circle of Veles, signed an agreement on mutual recognition of priests that defined the criteria for the ordination of those wishing to become Slavic priests. On the same occasion, they once again expressed disapproval for some authors and movements, including the large Skoran Ezh Slavin, which is also present in Belarus and Ukraine. In 2014, the Russian government officially registered the Union of Slavic Native Belief Communities as an interregional public organization for the promotion of Slavic culture. On 17 March 2014 the day after the Crimean status referendum, the Russian Rodnover leader Ilya Cherkasov, also known as Volk H. V. Velislav, published the following statement, I welcome Crimeans with right choice. That day initiates the process of uniting Slavic peoples. And no one is going to be able to interrupt this. He approved the result of the referendum despite the international controversies arisen around its legality and credibility. Rodnovery has a significant role in the war in Donbass, with many Rodnovers forming or joining armed forces. Some of them, for example those of the Sverizich Battalion, have been fighting in favor of Russia. Other Rodnovers, such as those of the Azov Battalion, have taken the side of Ukraine. The war has stirred different reactions among Ukrainian Rodnovers. Many adherents of the native Ukrainian national faith viewed Russia as the aggressor, while adherents of other Rodnover organizations like the Ancestral Fire of the Native Orthodox Faith more commonly saw Russians and Ukrainians as brothers and believed that the conflict was caused by the machinations of the United States. In August 2015, during the Three Polish Nationwide Rodnover Congress, the Rodnover Confederation was formally established. Among the members are 11 organizations including Gontina Association, Zerdwa Association, Pomeranian Rodnovers Rodzimoverki Pomorski, Drzuo Przedkow Association, Circle of Raidgast Krag Radagast, Kaldus Association, Swarga Group Gromada, Swarga, Wid Group, ZW Rodzima Wiara and the Watra Rodnover Community Spalnata Rodzimoverkau, Watra. In June 2017, during the celebrations of the nationwide holiday called Stado, a new religious organization was created, the Religious Organization of Polish Rodnovers, Kin, Zwiazek Wiznaniawi Rodzimowerkow Polskich, Rod. Topic: Branches, interwoven movements and influences. There are Rodnover groups who develop theories and practices which differ significantly from those of common Rodnovery, represented by the theology and cosmology contained in the Book of Velez and Slavic folklore. Some of them have developed into religions that may or may not be regarded as Rodnovery this is the case of Inglism, which is not recognized as true Slavic native faith by the major Rodnover organizations of Russia, and of Yagnovery, Ladovery and Solankoism, which some Rodnovers opine not to be classifiable as branches of Slavic native faith. Other Rodnover movements represent distinct ethnic groups within the broader Slavic family or space this is the case of Scythian Assians and Marian Rodnovers. There are, otherwise, Rodnover groups that intertwine with forms of religion and spirituality that are not immediately related to the Slavic native faith this is the case of Ivanovism, Rarikism and the Ringing Cedars. Other documented movements include the devotees of Barahynia in Ukraine, the Pan-Slavic Kara Kors Slavic Vedic movement, Kolyata Vyatyshe, the Russian religious church of Viktor Kandiba, the Satya Veda Aryan Gentile community of Ilya Cherkasov, Volk H. V. Velislav, the Tezoris Spiritual Union, amongst others. According to Irina Sadovina, more or less all of these movements share the assumption to represent expressions of a universal truth, or Vedic wisdom. 
Topic: <laughs> Ethnic or doctrinal variations of Rodnovery. Topic: <laughs> Scythian Asianism. Asianism Russian, Asjinsvo is essentially Scythian Rodnovery. It is present in Russia and Ukraine, especially, but not exclusively, among Cossacks who claim a Scythian identity to distinguish themselves from Slavs. An organized renewal of Scythian religion started in the 1980s building upon the folk religious beliefs of the Ossetians, who are modern linguistic descendants of the Scythians. They endonymously call the religion Uats Din Ossetian Cyrillic, Uakdan literally, true faith and have embraced it in large numbers. The North Caucasian Scythian Regional Fire is a Scythian Rodnover organization in the North Caucasus region of Russia and eastern Ukraine that operates under the aegis of the ancestral fire of the native Orthodox faith. The major organization among Ossetians is the Atsaiti Church Ossetian, Ak -ash -ash, Russian, Asata Asata, led by Dorbik Makiev, based in North Ossetia Alania. Some Russians have embraced Asianism by virtue of the fact that most of the ancient Scythians were assimilated by the East Slavs, and therefore modern Russians may reclaim Scythian culture. Such idea that Russians may derive, at least in part, from Scythians is popular in many Rodnover circles. Makiev himself, in a 2007 publication entitled, Asianism and World Culture, Asjinsvo i Mirovaya Kultura, presented the religion as a worldwide spiritual heritage. In 2009, on the occasion of a conference specifically dedicated to the subject held at the Moscow State University, philosopher Alexander Dugan praised the renewal of Scythian culture among Ossetians as an inspiration that will be beneficial to all Indo-Europeans and to the whole world. <laughs> Marian Rodnovery Marian Rodnovery or Marian Native Faith is an ethnoreligious movement present in the regions of Ivanovo, Kostroma, Moscow, Vladimir, Vologda, Tver, and Yaroslavl. It consists in the establishment of an ethnoreligious identity among those Russians who have Marian ancestry. Maria are Volga Finns fully assimilated by East Slavs in the historical process of formation of the Russian ethnicity. It is primarily an urban phenomenon and its adherents are Russian speakers. Various organizations have been established in the late 2000s and 2010s, including Merjama and Maria Mir. Mir. In 2012, they presented their official flag. Skrulnikov notes that a salient feature of the movement is what he defines ethnofuturism. That is to say, conscious adaptation of Maria heritage to the forms of modernity, in a process of distinction and interaction with Russian native faith. He says that Marian native faith is mostly Slavic native faith whose concepts, names and iconography are Finnicized. Marian Rodnovers also rely upon the uninterrupted traditions of Mari native faith. On the 27th of September 2015, they organized a joint Mari Maria prayer in the Moscow region. The cult of a Marian mother goddess is being built upon the festival of the female saint Paraskevi of Iconium on November 10. Also, Saint Leontius of Rostov is appropriated as a native god. Topic. Ukrainian Solenkoism Solenkoism is the branch of Rodnovery represented by the churches of the native Ukrainian national faith established by Lev Solenko in the 1960s in the Ukrainian diaspora, and introduced in Ukraine only after the fall of the Soviet Union. There are at least four such churches, the Association of Sons and Daughters of Ukraine of the Native Ukrainian National Faith, the Association of Sons and Daughters of the Native Ukrainian National Faith, the Fellowship established by Volodymyr Chornyi centered in Lviv, and the more independent Union of the Native Ukrainian Faith. According to the definition of Solenko himself, his doctrine is that of a solar, absolute monotheism in which the single god is Dazbog, that is to say the sky, the sun, and the self-giving of the world itself. Solenko proclaimed himself a prophet, bringing to the Slavs a new understanding of God that, according to him, corresponds to their own and original understanding of God. By his own words, God's grace came upon me, and following the will of God I have proclaimed a new understanding of God. According to believers, he acquired this knowledge through breath of his ancestors, being united with them by divine holiness. The Federation of Ukrainian Rodnovers, which directly inherits Volodymyr Shayan's orthodoxy, in the person of its leader Helena Lozko has advanced vehement critiques of Solenkoism, calling Lev Solenko a false prophet, and accusing him of trying to lead Ukrainians in the 
quagmire of cosmopolitan monotheism, the fruit of Judaic religions which aim for global world domination. Topic: <laughs> Yagnovary, Ladovary, and Orientism. Yagnovary, Ukrainian, Agnovira, Ladovary, Ladovira, and Orientism. Orientism are branches of Rodnovary that are present in Ukraine. Ladovary is a doctrine articulated by Oleksandr Shokalo and other personalities in the magazine Ukrainsky Svit. Ukrainian world. Orientism is a movement centered around the cult of Barahynia, linked to Ukrainian national identity, non-violence and resistance to global assimilation. Inglism <inaudible> 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 Inglism Russian, Ingliism institutionally known as the ancient Russian Inglist Church of the Orthodox Old Believers — Inglings, was established in the early 1990s by the charismatic leader Alexander Kinovich from OMSK, in Siberia. According to the movement, which presents itself as the true, orthodox, olden religion of the Russians, Ingli is the fiery order of reality through which the Supreme God — called by the name, Ramha, in Inglist theology — ongoingly generates the universe. They believe that Ingling, a name that identifies the earliest royal dynasties of Scandinavia, means offspring of Ingli, and that the historical Inglings migrated to Scandinavia from the region of OMSK, which was a spiritual center of the early Indo-Europeans. They hold that the Inglinga saga of the Edda itself composed by Snorri Sturluson on the basis of an older Inglingadal, proves their ideas about the origins of the Inglings in OMSK and is ultimately a more recent version of texts contained in their own sacred books. The Slavo-Aryan Vedas, the spiritual academy of the Inglist Church teaches their Vedas, Aryan mathematics, and grammar, and health techniques. The Church is known for its intensive proselytism, carried out through a massive selling of books, journals and other media. Inglists organize yearly gatherings vesh. in summer. The Inglist Church was prosecuted in the early 2000s for ethnic hatred according to Russian laws, and its headquarters in OMSK were liquidated. Despite this, it continues to operate as an unregistered religious phenomenon represented by a multiplicity of communities. Inglism meets widespread disapproval within mainstream Rodnovery, and the international vesh has declared it a false religion. Nevertheless, according to Adamerto, 2016, on the basis of the amount of literature that Inglists publish and the presence of their representatives at various Rodnover conferences, is clear that Inglism has a substantial number of followers. <laughs> <laughs> Movements belonging to the Vedic spectrum <laughs> <laughs> Ivanovism, Rarikism, Peterburgian Vedism Ivanovism, Russian, Ivanovism and Rarikism are spiritual movements linked with Russian cosmism, a holistic philosophy emphasizing the centrality of the human being within a living environment and the idea of God-building. It originated in the early 20th century and experienced a revival after the collapse of the Soviet Union, relying upon the Russian philosophical tradition, especially that represented by Vladimir Vernadsky and Pavel Florensky. Rarikism originates from the teachings of Helena and Nicholas Rarik. It inherits elements of theosophy and revolves around the practice of Agni Yoga, the union with Agni, the fire and living the universe. Ivakiv 2005 classifies Rarikians and others' movements of theosophical imprint, such as the Ukrainian Spiritual Republic, together with the broader Vedic movement. Ivanovism is a spiritual discipline based on the teachings of the mystic Porfiry Ivanov, based on the Detka healing system and religious hymns. The movement has its headquarters in eastern Ukraine, the region of origin of Ivanov himself, and it is widespread in Russia. Ivanovite teachings are incorporated by Peterburgian Vedism, the Rodnover movement started by Viktor Bezverki and primarily represented by the Society of the Mages founded in 1986 and the Union of the Venids founded in 1990, and their offshoots. <laughs> Ringing Cedars Anastasianism the Ringing Cedars Russian, Zvenezy Kedri or Anastasianism is a spiritual movement that overlaps with Rodnovery. The Ringing Cedars movement arises from the writings of Vladimir Megar Puzikov, codified in a series of ten books, whose teachings are attributed to an archetypal Siberian wise woman known as Anastasia. These books teach what Rasa Pranskovichut has defined as a cosmological pantheism, in which nature is the manifested 
thought of God, and human thought has the power to commune with him and to actively participate in his creation. Anastasians have established rural villages all over Russia, kinship homesteads, Rodovo Pomest Rodovoy Pomesti, where they conduct a harmonious life in at least a hectare of land. The name, Ringing Cedars, derives from the beliefs held by Anastasians about the spiritual qualities of the Siberian cedar. In his writings, Megar identifies the ideal society which the Ringing Cedars movement aims at establishing as Vedic, and many of his teachings are identical to those of other movements of Rodnovery. <laughs> Demographics <laughs> <laughs> Eastern Slavic nations <laughs> Russia Writing in 2000, Schneierlman noted that Rodnovery was "...growing rapidly," within the Russian Federation. In 2016, Adamerto noted that there was "...no reliable information," on the number of Rodnovers in Russia, but that it was "...plausible," that there were "...several tens of thousands," of practitioners active in the country. This was partly because there were several Rodnover groups active on the social network VK which had over 10,000 members. Estimates from some research institutes, often reported by Russian Orthodox Church organs, put the number of native faith practitioners in the few millions. Adamerto observed that a substantial number of adherents, and in particular those who had been among the earliest, belonged to the technical intelligentsia. Similarly, Schneierlman noted that the founders of Russian Rodnovery were well-educated urbanized intellectuals, who had become frustrated with cosmopolitan urban culture. Physicists were particularly well represented, in this Adamerdo drew comparisons to the high number of computer professionals who were present in the pagan communities of Western countries. The movement also involved a significant number of people who had a background in the Soviet or Russian army, or in policing and security. The vast majority of Russian Rodnovers were young and there were a greater proportion of men than women. A questionnaire distributed at the Kupala Festival in Maloyaroslavitz suggested that Rodnovers typically had above average levels of education, with a substantial portion working as business owners or managers. A high proportion were also involved in specialist professions such as engineering, academia, or information technology, and the majority lived in cities. The historian Marlene LaRoule suggested that Rodnovery was likely to remain a marginalized religion in comparison to Russian Orthodoxy, but that its main significance for Russian society had been by diffusing historical themes, particularly regarding an ancient Aryan race to a far wider audience, including many who were Orthodox or non religious. A number of youth subcultures have been identified as introducing people to Rodnovery, among them heavy metal, historical reenactment, and the admirers of J.R.R. Tolkien. Rodnovery is also spread through a variety of newspapers and journals. Also popular with Russian Rodnovers has been the martial arts movement known as Slaviano Goritskaya Borba. A number of popular celebrities, including the singer Maria Arkhipova and the professional boxer Alexander Povetkin, have publicly embraced Rodnovery. Topic. Ukraine Slavic native faith underwent dramatic growth in Ukraine during the early and mid-1990s. In 2005, Ivakiv noted that there were likely between 5,000 and 10,000 practitioners in Ukraine. The religion's main base consisted of ethnic Ukrainians who were nationally oriented and who displayed higher than average levels of education. There is overlap between Slavic native faith followers and other sectors of Ukrainian society, such as the folk and traditional music revival groups, Cossack associations, traditional martial arts groups, and nationalist and ultra nationalist organizations. Ivakiv noted that Rodnovery remains a relatively small niche in Ukrainian religious culture and that it faces a mixed reception in the country. Established Ukrainian Orthodox and Roman Catholic groups have viewed it with alarm and hostility, while the country's educated and intellectual classes tend to view it as a fringe part of the ultra conservative movement which was tinged with antisemitism and xenophobia. In the global Ukrainian diaspora, there has been a great decline in the numbers practicing the native Ukrainian national faith branch of Rodnovery. This has been due to branches' inability to attract sufficient numbers of youth in this community. 
Alternately, the Ukrainian organization Ancestral Fire of the Native Orthodox Faith has expanded in both Moldova and Germany. Topic: <inaudible> Belarus and Baltic states Slavic minorities. Slavic native faith groups are also active in Belarus, the most numerous being the Commonwealth of Rodovices, Rodnovers, who fully align with Slavic traditions, and the organization Radzimas, aligning with Baltic traditions instead. Rodnovery in Belarus is popular among some intellectuals active in the pro Russian political scene, for instance, Rodnover leader Yuladzimir Sachevik. There are also practicing Rodnovers among Lithuania's and Estonia's ethnically Russian minorities. Russians in Estonia have established their own religious organization, the Fellowship of the Russian People's Faith in Estonia, registered in Tartu in 2010. <laughs> Western Slavic nations As of 2013, Rodnover groups in Bulgaria were described as having few members and little influence. That same year, Simpson noted that Slavic native faith remains a very small religion in Poland, which is otherwise dominated by Roman Catholicism. He suggested that there were under 900 regularly active members of the main four registered Polish native faith organizations, and around as many adherents belonging to smaller, unregistered groups. In 2017, he stated that between 2000 and 2500, "...actively engaged and regular participants," were likely active in the country. He observed that in the country, Slavic native faith's adherents were "...still relatively young," and saw an overlap with the community of historical reenactors. In Poland, Slavic native faith outnumbers other pagan religions, although both are represented in the Pagan Federation International's Polish branch. Anna Marie Dostolova stated that the entire pagan community in the Czech Republic which includes heathens, Wiccans, and Druids as well as Slavic Rodnovers was of a small size. See also Media related to Slavic neopaganism at Wikimedia Commons Heathenry Celtic Reconstructionist Paganism Veda Slovena Armenian Neopaganism Baltic Neopaganism Caucasian Neopaganism Zalmoxianism Notes References Topic Footnotes Topic Sources Topic Secondary Sources Topic Primary Sources Petrovic, Milan, twenty thirteen Qualification of Slavic Rodnovery in Scientific Literature Neopaganism or Ethnic Religion PDF. Serbia, Svevlad Association of the Ecological and Ethnological Cultural Center. Sfera. Archived from the original PDF on 7 July 2017.